The Law of One Session 67, August 15, 1981 67.0 RA I am Ra and I greet you in the love and in the light of the One Infinite Creator. I communicate now. 67.1 Questioner Could you first give us the instrument's condition, please? I am Ra. The vital energies are more closely aligned with the amount of distortion normal to this entity than previous asking showed. The physical complex energy levels are somewhat less strong than at the previous asking. The psychic attack component is exceptionally strong at this particular nexus. 67.2 Questioner Can you describe what you call the psychic attack component and tell me why it is strong at this particular time? I am Ra. We shall elect not to retrace previously given information but rather elect to note that the psychic attack upon this instrument is at a constant level as long as it continues in this particular service. Variations towards the distortion of intensity of attack occur due to the opportunities presented by the entity in any weakness. At this particular nexus the entity has been dealing with the distortion which you call pain for some time, as you call this measurement, and this has a cumulatively weakening effect upon physical energy levels. This creates a particularly favorable target of opportunity, and the entity of which we have previously spoken has taken this opportunity to attempt to be of service in its own way. It is fortunate for the ongoing vitality of this contact that the instrument is a strong-willed entity with little tendency towards the distortion, called among your peoples, hysteria, since the dizzying effects of this attack have been constant and at times disruptive for several of your diurnal periods. However, this particular entity is adapting well to the situation without undue distortions towards fear. Thus the psychic attack is not successful but does have some draining influence upon the instrument. 67.3 Questioner I will ask if I am correct in this analysis. We would consider that the entity making this so-called attack is offering its service with respect to its distortion in our polar eyes condition now, so that we may more fully appreciate its polarity. And we are appreciative, and thank this entity for its attempt to serve our one creator in bringing to us knowledge in, shall I say, a more complete sense. Is this correct? I am raw. There is no correctness or incorrectness to your statement. It is an expression of a positively polarized and balanced view of negatively polarized actions which has the effect of debilitating the strength of the negatively polarized actions. 67.4 Questioner We would welcome the services of the entity who uses, and I will use the misnomer, you might say, of attack, since I did not consider this an attack but an offering of service, and we welcome this offering of service, but we would be able, I believe, to make more full use of the service if it were not physically disabling the instrument in a minor way. For with a greater physical ability, she would be able to more appreciate the service. We would greatly appreciate it if the service was carried on in some manner which we could welcome in even greater love than at present. This, I assume, would be some service that would not include the dizzying effect. I am trying to understand the mechanism of this service by the entity that seems to be constantly with us. And I am trying to understand the origin of this entity and the mechanism of greeting us. I will make a statement that is probably not only incorrect, but is a function of my extreme limitation in understanding the other densities and how they work. I am guessing that this particular entity is a member of the Orion Confederation and is possibly, or possibly not, incarnate in a body of the appropriate density, which I assume is the fifth. And by mental discipline, he has been able to project a portion, if not all of his consciousness to our coordinates. You might say, here, and it is possibly one of the seven bodies that make up his mind slash body slash spirit complex. Is any of this correct? And can you tell me what is correct or incorrect about that statement? I am raw. The statement is substantially correct. 67.5 Questioner. Would you rather not give me information as to the specifics of my statement? RA, I am raw. We did not perceive a query in further detail. Please re-question. 67.6 Questioner Which body, with respect to the colors, does the entity use to travel to us? I am raw. This query is not particularly simple to answer due to the transdimensional nature, not only of space slash time to time slash space, but from density to density. The time slash space light or fifth density body is used while the space slash time fifth density body remains in fifth density. The assumption that the consciousness is projected thereby is correct. 
The assumption that this conscious vehicle attached to the space slash time fifth density physical complex is that vehicle which works in this particular service is correct. 67.7 Questioner I undoubtedly will ask several very uninformed and poor questions. However, I was trying to understand certain concepts having to do with the illusion, I shall say, of the polarization that seems to exist at certain density levels in the creation. And how can the mechanism of interaction of consciousness? It is a very difficult subject for me. And therefore I ask your forgiveness for my poor questions. But it seems to me that the fifth density entity is attracted in some way to our group by the polarization of this group, which acts somehow as a beacon to the entity. Am I correct? I am wrong. This is, in substance, correct, but the efforts of this entity are put forward only reluctantly. The usual attempts upon positively oriented entities or groups of entities are made, as we have said, by minions of the fifth density Orion leaders, these are fourth density. The normal gambit of such fourth density attack is the tempting of the entity or group of entities away from total polarization towards service to others and toward the aggrandizement of self or of social organizations with which the self identifies. In the case of this particular group each was given a full range of temptations to cease being of service to each other and to the one infinite creator. Each entity declined these choices and instead continued with no significant deviations from the desire for a purely other self-service orientation. At this point one of the fifth density entities overseeing such detuning processes determined that it would be necessary to terminate the group by what you might call magical means, as you understand ritual magic. We have previously discussed the potential for the removal of one of this group by such attack and have noted that by far the most vulnerable is the instrument due to its pre-incarnative physical complex distortions. 67.8 Questioner In order for this group to be fully in service to the Creator, since we recognize this fifth density entity as the Creator, we must also attempt to serve, in any way we can, this entity. Is it possible for you to communicate to us the desires of this entity if there are any in addition to simply ceasing the reception and dissemination of that which you provide for us? I am wrong. This entity has two desires. The first and foremost is to, shall we say, misplace one or more of this group in a negative orientation so that it may choose to be of service along the path of service to self. The objective which must precede this is the termination of the physical complex viability of one of this group while the mind slash body slash spirit complex is within a controllable configuration. May we say that although we of Ra have limited understanding, it is our belief that sending this entity love and light, which each of the group is doing, is the most helpful catalyst which the group may offer to this entity. 67.9 Questioner. We find I am sorry. Continue if you wish to continue with it. I am Ra. We were about to note that this entity has been as neutralized as possible in our estimation by this love offering and thus its continued presence is perhaps the understandable limit for each polarity of the various views of service which each may render to the other. 67.10 Questioner We have a paradoxical situation in that, in order to fully serve the Creator at this level in the polar eyes section, you might say, of the creation, we have requests, from those whom we serve in this density, for Ra's information. In fact, I just had one by telephone a short while ago. However, we have requests from, in this particular case, another density not to disseminate this information. We have the Creator, in fact, requesting two seemingly opposite activities of this group. It would be very helpful if we could reach a condition of full, total, complete service in such a way that we were by every thought and activity serving the Creator to the very best of our ability. Is it possible for you to solve? Or possible for the fifth density entity who offers its service to solve? The paradox that I have observed? I am wrong. It is quite possible. 67.11 Questioner. Then how could we solve this paradox? I am wrong. Consider, if you will, that you have no ability not to serve the Creator since all is the Creator. In your individual growth patterns appear the basic third density choice. Further, there are overlaid memories of the positive polarizations of your home density. Thus your particular orientation is strongly polarized toward service to others and has attained wisdom as well as compassion. You do not have merely two opposite requests for service. You will find an infinite array of contradictory requests for information or lack of information from this source if you listen carefully to those whose voices you may hear. 
This is all one voice to which you resonate upon a certain frequency. This frequency determines your choice of service to the one creator. As it happens this group's vibratory patterns and those of Ra are compatible and enable us to speak through this instrument with your support. This is a function of free will. A portion, seemingly, of the creator rejoices at your choice to question us regarding the evolution of spirit. A seemingly separate portion would wish for multitudinous answers to a great range of queries of a specific nature. Another seemingly separate group of your peoples would wish this correspondence through this instrument to cease, feeling it to be of a negative nature. Upon the many other planes of existence there are those whose every fiber rejoices at your service and those such as the entity of whom you have been speaking which wish only to terminate the life upon the third density plane of this instrument. All are the creator. There is one vast panoply of biases and distortions, colors and hues, in an unending pattern. In the case of those with whom you, as entities and as a group, are not in resonance, you wish them love, light, peace, joy, and bid them well. No more than this can you do for your portion of the Creator is as it is and your experience and offering of experience, to be valuable, needs be more and more a perfect representation of who you truly are. Could you, then, serve a negative entity by offering the instrument's life? It is unlikely that you would find this a true service. Thus you may see in many cases the loving balance being achieved, the love being offered, light being sent, and the service of the service to self-oriented entity gratefully acknowledged while being rejected as not being useful in your journey at this time. Thus you serve one creator without paradox. 67.12 Questioner This particular entity is able to create, with its service, a dizzying effect on the instrument. Could you describe the mechanics of such a service? I am wrong. This instrument, in the small times of its incarnation, had the distortion in the area of the odic complex of many infections which caused great difficulties at this small age, as you would call it. The scars of these distortions remain and indeed that which you call the sinus system remains distorted. Thus the entity works with these distortions to produce a loss of the balance and a slight lack of ability to use the optic apparatus. 67.13 Questioner I was wondering about the magical shall I say, principles behind the fifth density entity giving this service, and his ability to give it, why is he able to utilize these particular physical distortions from a philosophical or magical point of view? I am Ra. This entity is able to, shall we say, penetrate in time slash space configuration the field of this particular entity. It has moved through the quarantine without any vehicle and thus has been more able to escape detection by the net of the guardians. This is the great virtue of the magical working whereby consciousness is sent forth essentially without vehicle as light. The light would work instantly upon an untuned individual by suggestion, that is the stepping out in front of the traffic because the suggestion is that there is no traffic. This entity, as each in this group, is enough disciplined in the ways of love and light that it is not suggestible to any great extent. However, there is a predisposition of the physical complex which this entity is making maximal use of as regards the instrument, hoping for instance, by means of increasing dizziness, to cause the instrument to fall or to indeed walk in front of your traffic because of impaired vision. The magical principles, shall we say, may be loosely translated into your system of magic whereby symbols are used and traced and visualized in order to develop the power of the light. 67.14 Questioner do you mean then that this fifth density entity visualizes certain symbols? I am assuming that these symbols are of a nature where their continued use would have some power or charge. Am I correct? I am Ra. You are correct. In fifth density light is as visible a tool as your pencil's writing. 67.15 Questioner Then am I correct in assuming this entity configures the light into symbology? That is what we would call a physical presence. Is this correct? I am Ra. This is incorrect. The light is used to create a sufficient purity of environment for the entity to place its consciousness in a carefully created light vehicle which then uses the tools of light to do its working. The will and presence are those of the entity doing the working. 67.16 Questioner Are you familiar with a book that the instrument and I wrote approximately 12 years ago called The Crucifixion of Ismael to Sweet Water? In particular the banishing ritual used to bring the entities to Earth? I am wrong. This is correct. 
67.17 Questioner. Were there any incorrectnesses in our writing with respect to the way this was performed? I am wrong. The incorrectnesses occurred only due to the difficulty an author would have in describing the length of training necessary to enable the ones known in that particular writing as Theodore and Pablo in the necessary disciplines. 67.18 Questioner. It has seemed to me that that book has somehow, in its entirety, been a link to many of those whom we have met since we wrote it, and to many of the activities we have experienced. Is this correct? I am wrong. This is quite so. 67.19 Questioner. I will ask about that in a later session, since I don't want to get off the track because it has something to do with the mechanics of time, which I am very puzzled about, but I would ask then, the fifth density entity in coming here to offer service as you mentioned penetrated the quarantine. Was this done through one of the windows, or was this because of his, shall I say, magical ability? I am wrong. This was done through a very slight window which less magically oriented entities or groups could not have used to advantage. 67.20 Questioner on uh, now. The main point of this line of questioning has to do with the first distortion and the fact that this window existed. Was this, shall I say, a portion of the random window effect? And are we experiencing the same type of balancing in receiving the offerings of this entity as the planet in general receives because of the window effect? I am raw. This is precisely correct. As the planetary sphere accepts more highly evolved positive entities or groups with information to offer, the same opportunity must be offered to similarly wise negatively oriented entities or groups. 67.21 Questioner. Then we experience in this seeming difficulty the what I would call effect of the wisdom of the first distortion, and for that reason must fully accept the wisdom of that which we experience. This is my personal view. Is it congruent with Ross? I am wrong. In our view we would perhaps go further in expressing appreciation of this opportunity. This is an intensive opportunity in that it is quite marked in its effects, both actual and potential, and as it affects the instrument's distortions towards pain and other difficulties such as the dizziness, it enables the instrument to continuously choose to serve others and to serve the Creator. Similarly it offers a continual opportunity for each in the group to express support under more distorted or difficult circumstances of the other self experiencing the brunt, shall we say, of this attack, thus being able to demonstrate the love and light of the infinite creator and, furthermore, choosing working by working to continue to serve as messengers for this information which we attempt to offer and to serve the creator thereby. Thus the opportunities are quite noticeable as well as the distortions caused by this circumstance. 67.22 Questioner. Thank you. Is this so-called attack offered to myself and Jim, as well as the instrument? I am wrong. This is correct. 67.23 Questioner. I personally have felt no effect that I am aware of. Is it possible for you to tell me how we are offered this service? I am wrong. The questioner has been offered the service of doubting the self and of becoming disheartened over various distortions of the personal nature. This entity has not chosen to use these opportunities and the Orion entity has basically ceased to be interested in maintaining constant surveillance of this entity. The scribe is under constant surveillance and has been offered numerous opportunities for the intensification of the mental-slash-emotional distortions and in some cases the connection matrices between mental-slash-emotional complexes and the physical complex counterpart. As this entity has become aware of these attacks it has become much less pervious to them. This is the particular cause of the great intensification and constancy of the surveillance of the instrument, for it is the weak link due to factors beyond its control within this incarnation. 67.24 Questioner. Is it within the first distortion to tell me why the instrument experienced so many physical distortions during the new times of its incarnation? I am wrong. This is correct. 67.25 Questioner. In that case, can you answer me as to why the instrument experienced so much during its early years? I am wrong. We were affirming the correctness of your assumption that such answers would be breaking the way of confusion. It is not appropriate for such answers to be laid out as a table spread for dinner. It is appropriate that the complexes of opportunity involved be contemplated. 67.26 Questioner then there is no other service that we can at this time offer that fifth density entity of the Orion group, who is so constantly with us. As I see it now, there is nothing that we can do for him from your point of view. Is this correct? I am wrong. 
This is correct. There is great humor in your attempt to be of polarized service to the opposite polarity. There is a natural difficulty in doing so since what you consider service is considered by this entity non-service. As you send this entity love and life and wish it well it loses its polarity and needs to regroup. Thus it would not consider your service as such. On the other hand, if you allowed it to be of service by removing this instrument from your midst you might perhaps perceive this as not being of service. You have here a balanced and polarized view of the Creator, two services offered, mutually rejected, and in a state of equilibrium in which free will is preserved and each allowed to go upon its own path of experiencing the one infinite Creator. 67.27 Questioner Thank you. In closing that part of the discussion, I would just say that if there is anything that we can do that is within our ability, and I understand that there are many things such as the ones that you just mentioned that are not within our ability that we could do for this particular entity. If you would in the future communicate its requests to us, we will at least consider them because we would like to serve in every respect. Is this agreeable to you? I am raw. We perceive that we have not been able to clarify your service versus its desire for service. You need, in our humble opinion, to look at the humor of the situation and relinquish your desire to serve where no service is requested. The magnet will attract or repel. Glory in the strength of your polarization and allow others of opposite polarity to similarly do so, seeing the great humor of this polarity and its complications in view of the unification in sixth density of these two paths. 67.28 Questioner Thank you very much. I have a statement here that I will quickly read and have you comment on the accuracy or inaccuracy. In general, the archetypical mind is a representation of facets of the one infinite creation. The father archetype corresponds to the male or positive aspect of electromagnetic energy and is active, creative, and radiant as is our local sun. The mother archetype corresponds to the female or negative aspect of electromagnetic energy and is receptive or magnetic, as is our Earth as it receives the sun's rays and brings forth life by a third density fertility. The prodigal sun or the fool archetype corresponds to every entity who seems to have strayed from unity and seeks to return to the one infinite creator. The devil archetype represents the illusion of the material world and the appearance of evil, but is more accurately the provider of catalyst for the growth of each entity within the third density illusion. The magician, saint, healer, or adept corresponds to the higher self and, because of the balance within its energy centers, pierces the illusion to contact intelligent infinity and thereby demonstrates mastery of the catalyst of third density. The archetype of death symbolizes the transition of an entity from the yellow ray body to the green ray body, either temporarily between incarnations or, more permanently, at harvest. Each archetype presents an aspect of the one infinite creation to teach the individual mind slash body slash spirit complex according to the calling or the electromagnetic configuration of mind of the entity. Teaching is done by the intuition, with proper seeking or mind configuration. The power of wool uses the spirit as a shuttle to contact the appropriate archetypical aspect necessary for the teach slash learning. In the same way each of the other informers of intuition are contacted, they are hierarchical and proceed from the entity's own subconscious mind to group or planetary mind, to guides, to higher self, to archetypical mind, to cosmic mind or intelligent infinity. Each is contacted by the spirit serving as shuttle according to the harmonized electromagnetic configuration of the seeker's mind and the information sought. Will you please comment on the accuracy of these observations and correct any errors or fill in any omissions? I am wrong. The entity has been using transferred energy for most of this session due to its depleted physical levels. We shall begin this rather complex answer which is interesting but do not expect to finish it. Those portions which we do not respond to we ask that you re-question us upon it a working in your future. 67.29 Questioner Perhaps it would be better to start the next session with the answer to this question. Would that be appropriate? Or is the energy already fixed? I am wrong. The energy is as always allotted. The choice, as always, is yours. 67.30 Questioner In that case, continue. I am wrong. Perhaps the first item which we shall address is the concept of the spirit used as a shuttle between the roots and the trunk of mind. This is a misapprehension and we shall allow the questioner to consider the function of the spirit further, for in working with the mind we are working within one complex and have not yet attempted to penetrate intelligent infinity. 
It is well said that archetypes are portions of the one infinite creator or aspects of its face. It is, however, far better to realize that the archetypes, while constant in the complex of generative energies offered, do not give the same yield of these complexes to any two seekers. Each seeker will experience each archetype in the characteristics within the complex of the archetype which are most important to it. An example of this would be the observation of the questioner that the fool is described in such and such a way. One great aspect of this archetype is the aspect of faith, the walking into space without regard for what is to come next. This is, of course, foolish but is part of the characteristic of the spiritual neophyte. That this aspect was not seen may be pondered by the questioner. At this time we shall again request that the query be restated at the next working and we shall at this time cease using this instrument. Before we leave may we ask if there may be any short questions. 67.31 Questioner Only if there is anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or to improve the contact. I am raw. Continue, my friends, in the strength of harmony, love, and light. All is well. The alignments are appreciated for their careful placement. I am raw. I leave you now, my friends, in the glory of the love and the light of the infinite creator. Go forth, then, rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai.